Um, that's kind of where we wanted to go today is kind of talking more about that power and control and what that looks like and what are some warning signs. And uh, I know we've talked some about that before, but I, I think it's always important to kind of look at it and just ask questions. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that uh, that power and control dynamic a little bit. And I know you, one term that you had kind of thrown at me there, Susan, as we got started was narcissism and, and how that kind of builds in a relationship. How about those those couple of things? Sure. Um, so it does escalate um, over time. And um, a lot of people don't realize that we talk about narcissism a lot. And uh, it seems to be kind of a buzzword, excuse me, in this day and age. Um, but it, 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 there is actually a personality disorder called narcissistic personality disorder. And it, um, it's generally characterized by like this grandiose sense of self and this inflated sense that I'm better than everybody and everybody has to kind of do what I say and do what I need and um, care for me. Um, They have a deep need for excessive attention or admiration. Mm -hmm. Um, They often uh, react negatively to criticism. They're preoccupied by this, this whole power, success and beauty. They expect special treatment. Um, And then, and, and as you can imagine this, this kind of this imbalance of, um, the relationship. So, you know, everything is based on what I need and what I want and everything has to, to uh, kind of evolve around me. And that obviously leaves troubled relationships. And, and part of that is they have a lack of empathy for others. Um, so they, again, just have this expectation of um, special treatment and it, it truly does lead to violence because Mm -hmm. they have such a a need for this attention that they start over time becoming more and more obsessed on how to keep that control and how to keep that power. So that looks um, a lot like different, it, it looks different in different ways. So yeah, and it sounds like there's like an emotional instability, you know, or a a lack of, you know, like like some like a, a, yeah, I guess emotional instability is kind of the the way I would um I would describe a lot of what you're saying there. Is that is that fair? You think? I think that's fair, and um, one of the things Jill reminds me of is um, they fear abandonment. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Yeah. They and they fear that somehow they're not going to be held to this higher esteem in some way. So they, that, that fear is what drives their, their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Now you were, you were, you were talking there, Susan, about how a lot of this kind of snowballs into an incident of violence. Uh, Talk a little bit about that. Continue, continue that thought. I I rudely interrupted you there. Uh, How about, (laughs) how about the rest of that? Um, Sure. So one of the ways that they, we uh, another kind of buzzword that we talk about is um, through gaslighting. Mm-hmm. So um, narcissists are are, are definitely mm-hmm. want to gaslight a lot. And what that looks like is basically manipulating someone by by ha- having them question their own sanity. Mm-hmm. So it kind of twists the sense of reality for people and um, so some of the statements they might say is, well, that's not happening, or that's not the way it happened, or, well, you're too sensitive, or you have a terrible memory, you're crazy, I, I'm sorry that you think that I'm doing that. And and the reality is, is all of these things are actually happening, mm-hmm. but they kind of twist it and make it sound like it's the other person's fault, and it's actually in the mind of the other person. So over time, as as this keeps happening, they maintain control of the relationship by just convincing the other person that they're crazy and that these things are not really happening. Right, right. Interesting. I mean, it's to the point where on a number of occasions, some of our female clients have said they feel like they're having Alzheimer's, you know, the early onset of Alzheimer's. Because Really? Yes, because it's 
so it's so impactful and it's so powerful over the victim that they, you know, really doubt themselves and it's those seeds of self-doubt and the, that grows, the more of this happens, just like Susan was saying, as it happens um, over and over again, to the point where we've had several uh, clients tell us they've investigated, seriously investigated what the early onset of Alzheimer's looks like because it's so, it's so damaging to their psyche. I, I wonder, ladies, again, our guests on the phone today, Su uh, Jill Maxey and Susan Houston with uh, the uh, Willow Tree Missions in Piatt County. You know, at, at first you were talking there, Susan, and I was wondering, like, do these these abusers have somewhat of a cell, uh, a, a sense of like, um, like they, they think they're smarter than everyone else. But yeah. but then the more you talk, it's it like these are tactics it sounds like of a very intelligent person so i'm kind of conflicted like which one is it so it, uh, so narcissistic personality disorder is actually a, a mental health disorder um so they don't actually always know that they're doing it which that's that's hard to draw that line like you're saying is okay this sounds really intelligent that they're actually really knowing what they're doing with power and control but do they Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it so dangerous, because if they don't know they're doing it, then they can't necessarily stop it. Interesting. Interesting. How about uh, the the like how this continues to snowball, Susan? And, and you know, what kind of comes next? I mean, you're talking about this this sense of self-doubt in their victims. Um, mm -hmm. You know, where where does it go next? Like and, and does an abuser kind of know where they're their victim is at as this as they continue this cycle? How about that? I, I think it kind of depends on the, the the abuser, honestly, and if they truly have narcissistic personality disorder. Now, to be fair, I think all of us have some narcissism in us, right? Um, so, you know, whether it's truly a mental health personality disorder or or just somebody being narcissist. So that I, I would think that both are dangerous when it comes to domestic violence. However, if one knows they're doing it and one doesn't, then that kind of, um, you know, it does, it is conflicting because you don't really know, right? You, right. you just don't really know which part you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. The, I, the thing, I think the more dangerous, if, if they're in, you know, if you can kind of say one is more dangerous than the other is the ones that are not actually mentally ill and with this personality disorder because they are intentionally manipulating their victims. They are mm -hmm. intentionally in, intentionally doing these things, but they are also using these same tactics because they're aware of them. Right, right. Now, how like is there a a you know data point to go to where it's like you know abusers you know they like a certain percentage of them have some sort of a mental disorder. There's there's an emotional imbalance. Like, is there a data point to you know kind of guide us in this conversation? Um, I'm sure there is a data point, Seth, but I'll be real honest. I don't know it right offhand. Um, I don't, I don't know what percentage. That's um, fine. I was, yeah, I was just kind of curious. It, it's, so it, is, it is a good question though. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's, it's just, uh, you know, like the, 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 the fact that there's kind of a, a model is somewhat heartbreaking. Just not that, that dynamic on its own, you know, that statement on its own is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies, I look at the clock. We could use a timeout here. So let's take that and uh, come back and talk some more. Uh, Jill, how do folks follow along with all things uh, Willow Tree Missions in Piatt County? Sure. You can find us on the website at willowtreemissions.org. Uh, we have a list of resources there for those who are going through a domestic violence situation. And if you're interested in shopping with us, you can check us out at Facebook or on Facebook at Willow Tree Missions. Very good. Again, that is Jill Maxey and Susan Houston with Willow Tree Missions in Piatt County. My guests on the phone here this morning and the morning show streams to Facebook and YouTube brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin insurance agent in Clinton. More to come on the morning show. Active.
Let's check the markets now on the RFD Radio Network. I'm Jim Taylor. Corn, beans, and wheat all trading higher at this hour. September corn up seven and a half, six eighty-eight and a quarter. December corn six eighty-five and a half, up nine and a half. March corn up eight and a half, six ninety and a quarter. September beans up thirteen and three quarters, fifteen oh three and three quarters. November beans up twenty-one and three quarters, fourteen twenty and a half. January beans up twenty-one and three quarters, fourteen twenty-five and a half. September wheat eight fifty-five, up fifty-five. December wheat up fifty-one and a quarter. 868 and a quarter September bean meal up twelve dollars four forty five fifty September bean oil down two fifty four sixty eight ninety six in the livestock market September feeders one eighty two seventy five down a dollar forty two October live cattle down fifteen cents one forty four ninety October lean hogs up a dollar seventy five ninety two eighty five in the energy market October crude oil down three forty eight eighty three forty and I'm Jim Taylor the RFD. Radio. MR Systems Wireless is your local internet provider for Clinton and surrounding area. They have the products you want and the local service you deserve. MR Systems Wireless Internet Service for home or business includes unlimited data, unlimited streaming, and unlimited calling. Plans start at just $48 a month and get a free Roku 4 lease with our media packages. Get the speed you need with MR Systems Wireless. Call them at 935-2100. That's 935-2100 for MR Systems Wireless. CEO Paul Scarin here from Warner Hospital and Health Services in Clinton. Our trained physical therapists offer quality, compassionate care close to home. Find out more by clicking our icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. When it comes to fire and water restoration, ServPro of Piatt DeWitt Counties is the leader in cleaning, restoration, and construction. Find out all the services they provide by clicking their icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. The Arcola Broom Corn Festival takes place September 9th through 11th in downtown Arcola, featuring the National Broom Sweeping Contest, Huge Broom Corn Parade, Kitty Tractor Pull, 5K and 10K Race, Carnival Rides, Miss Arcola Baby Pageant, and the Broom Corn Grand Marshal Bench Dedication. Live entertainment lineup from Big Guns, Whiskey River, Lady Luck, Tom Grassman, Duck Meeks, and Jake Worthington. Tune in to WHOW, the big 1520 AM, 92.3 FM, as we broadcast live from the Arcola Broom Corn Festival, thanks to Combs Body Shop, located at 109 Industrial Drive in Arcola. Come see us for all your restaurants repairs. Your friend in Central Illinois. W-H-O-W. Once again, good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence. The WHOW Morning Show is streaming to Facebook and YouTube, brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin Insurance agent in Clinton. Again, my guests on the phone today, Jill Maxey and Susan Houston with Willow Tree Missions in Piatt County. Susan, let's talk about warning signs of abuse, of an abusive person. What do you have for us? What should we be on the lookout for here this morning? Sure. Um, there's actually quite a few um but if you're not sure what to look for then you wouldn't know what you were looking for um but sometimes this this looks very just basic and and just like okay this is just general this is just a normal thing um but are they are is your partner constantly keeping track of your schedule and your whereabouts and are they i mean sometimes it's down to the minute like oh, where were you for the last 10 minutes? Or where was this, you know, why did this happen 10 minutes ago? Or, Mm -hmm. and and they're constantly controlling by um, just watching schedules. Um, Are they accusing you of flirting or cheating and you're really not, and or making you think that you are? Um, I know that that sometimes is the thing we were talking about gaslighting and that is a way people gaslight is they're, they're convinced they are so convinced that you're cheating or flirting that they convince you that you are, even if you're not. Um, and they're constantly criticizing you. Or a big one is isolation, um, using um, isolation, controlling what, and, and part of that is, you know, keeping the control of where you are, where, you, where you've been, and in an attempt to isolate, um, basically limiting the outside involvement in the in the relationship, so that can look like family, friends, um, coworkers. Basically, if you're not being allowed to to have conversations outside of your relationship, then that's kind of a, a little bit of a red flag. Um, controlling all the money that uh, economic abuse is certainly part of power and control, and it's um, perhaps it's oh you'd be better off if if I just work or you know mm-hmm. basically. If 
they have control of all the money. It's, oh, I don't want you to have a job. or And they can make it sound like, oh, I just, you know, I care about you and I want you to not have a job. And so I can just take care of you. And, you know, that sounds all good and fine. And so it's not. And um, basically not letting him or her have access to any of the money. Um, basically, okay, well, I'm the one that gets the paycheck, so you can't have any, or I'm, I'll give you an allowance. Sometimes that looks like, um, you know, basically being treated like a child. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of examples, too, that go along with that. Like, your name is, as a victim, your name is not on the title for a vehicle, or your name is not on the mortgage for the house. Um, you're not allowed to work as part of that isolation um, trick. And then specifically to the allowance, uh, recently somebody, an abuser, was giving a victim an allowance, and then that allowance needed to be used for uh, paying rent, paying the groceries. So it really wasn't any kind of an allowance at all. I mean, it was just going to cover all the bills that they had for their household. So. Mm. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like the victim could do anything fun with it because uh, it all needed to um, really ultimately serve whatever purpose the abuser had deemed it to go towards. Well, and I mean, just the notion that a significant other gets a quote allowance. I mean, I don't know. That just doesn't seem like a very like not just healthy <laughs> yeah. dynamic, but it's like what is the where's the fairness in that? You know. Right, right, exactly. Well, there is it, Penny. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I just like, I don't know. It's, it's, ladies, I have to confess, like, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound unsympathetic. It's just so hard for me to relate to this because it's like, why would you treat a person like that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it and happens so slowly that the victim is not, I mean, we can all sit here as, uh, you know, healthy, mentally stable adults and say this is not right but when you're in a relationship and you love a person and it happens very slowly over time it's hard to it's hard to separate it um so that by the time you're in it so deep it doesn't it no longer seems so unrealistic Mm -hmm. And, and when we when you get into a new relationship this happens a lot in a new relationship right because you're kind of in that already in that honeymoon phase and not mm-hmm. the same honeymoon phase necessarily as the cycle of violence but you, there is this kind of honeymoon phase where you're not you know you want them to take care of you you want you know to be supported by your significant other you you need you know this looks this looks good and fine and then over time you realize this is not good and fine mm-hmm. and it takes time to figure that out and then why the time some people figure it out it, it's too late and and they've already been abused they've already been you know through this cycle a few times mm-hmm. and they and you may not be even recognize it uh susan any other thoughts on the on the cycles of abuse and the the warning signs for for victims to be on the lookout for so um i think some seemingly obvious but maybe not um some pushing, hitting, slapping, punching, strangling um, you or your children or forcing uh, sexual activity um, that that doesn't, uh, consensual sex is not necessarily a given in any relationship. So um, if if that is a problem, then that is a problem. And it it is actually a a way to be victimized. Mm -hmm. So, and then another thing I wanted to, to to point out was people using children, so making them feel guilty about um, the children if there are children involved in relaying messages between children or, or or threatening to take the children away or you know when we talk about this in in the same sphere as gaslighting, um, look at what you're doing to your children, look at what you're um, teaching your children. Um, you're an unfit parent because this is how you are with your children. You know, it's using the children against them to gain that power and control. Mm-hmm. Man. And sometimes it's kind of coercing the, 
the children to be against the, the yeah. Parents. That one I heard a while back, and that one that man, there's just so many of these 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 you know things you're saying today that it's like it just it just hurts you to hear. And that that was one I heard a while back where you know abusers will get the victims' own children to to turn against them. It's or or you know or if they have children together you know, to turn against them. It's just, it's just bizarre. But uh, anyways, uh, ladies, I, I look at the clock. Susan, any final thoughts from you? I wanted to uh, allow Jill some time to highlight the capital campaign going on, but I'll, I'll let you uh, have the last word here as we talk here this morning. How about that? Sure. I just wanted to, to point out that there are several uh, resources available. Obviously, if you're in trouble, call 911 or the, the local law enforcement mm -hmm. and just, just use your local law enforcement. They can help you. But if you're intimidated by that for some reason or don't want to do that, you know, there are places like Dove and uh, Willow Tree Missions and there's the Illinois Coalition Against Domestic Violence. There is the National Hotline. There are just many, many resources available. Even if you're not sure and you want some kind of checklist or just want to look and say, I'm, I'm, I think I might be in this, but I'm not sure. I, I just want to encourage people to, to go find some resources because they are available and people are there to help you and to figure it out. And, mm -hmm. and maybe it's just, you need to talk to somebody. There is the 988 um, national, it, it's, it's more of a suicide and crisis life, uh, lifeline. They're calling it. It's 988. You can call or text it and it's, train crisis counselors so it doesn't necessarily have to be suicide so it's any kind of emotional distress gotcha very so, good i hate to do this to you ladies i got to cut us off and let let you go for the morning again that's susan houston and jill maxey with willow tree missions in piatt county the morning show streams to facebook and youtube brought to you by peterson insurance your peak and insurance agent in clinton <laughs> The Big 1520 WHOW Clinton, 92.3 FM, W222B 